to the Knits by Ada Knitting Podcast. This is episode 5, and I'm my name is Ada, and I'm a knitter from Finland. And on this channel, I like to talk about all of my knitting, sometimes crochet, and my cats, whenever they decide to make an appearance. So, today, as I said, episode number 5, it is the 21st of September. It's a Thursday, which... Surprisingly, I've been having a lot of Thursdays off, so I've been thinking that I might start to do like a Thursday upload every other week. We'll see if that becomes my main upload day, but no promises there. But yeah, I've been having a really chill uh, day off from work. We I celebrated my, my best friend's birthday today. We went to, out to eat and I gave him his present and then... We, we played Hogwarts Legacy, where I showed him how to play, because he doesn't own the game yet, and he was very interested. But yeah, I guess I'll start with what I'm wearing, and I'm actually not wearing one of my finished objects, but there's a good reason for that, because and the reason is that it's way too hot. I actually tried to film this episode earlier today, and I was just so tired for some reason that I couldn't handle it, and then in the end I didn't like the stuff that I said. I was so confusing in that video so I decided to try again and this time wear something that wasn't as big even though this is still nice warm and cozy. But yeah, uh, this is my vest number three. Uh, I In a previous episode I had made one that was all black and I mentioned that that was the second time that I had actually made the pattern and this is my first iteration of it uh, it's I made this from all of these scarf yarns that I had from different projects and stuff like that and it turned out into this nice rainbow version uh, actually maybe if I'll turn around a bit you can see I actually I'm kind of sad that I used this night bright blue on the back because I would have preferred it on the front, but I still really like the overall look on this. Yeah, so as I said, vest number three uh, by My Favorite Things Knitwear, and I think I did the extra large size, which at, the, at this point is sadly on the largest size on that pattern. So not very size inclusive, but it is fairly easy to like modify I think if you want it to be bigger or, well I'm not gonna promise that but I think it could be but yeah unfortunately not a very size inclusive pattern so there's that but I really enjoy this pattern as is seen as was seen when I made a second version I find this just really nice and cozy and the original pattern has I cord edging for the armholes but I did a one by one rib as is on the collar except on the collar is folded I just did some rows until I thought it was good and then bound off oh look there is one of my cats that is Yuisi he's our baby cat he's the youngest he's about a, a I think he well not just about a year a year and 30 months I think he is currently but He's a little baby. But yeah, that's number three. I really like it. I've really, I've actually found that this fits in my wardrobe very, fairly well, even though a lot of my wardrobe is like black. But this is a nice pop of color. And as you can see, I'm like wearing it, wearing it with a black t-shirt and I think it looks fine. I also like to wear it with like a black turtleneck or like a mock neck. So it comes a bit bit of black over here and then full long sleeves and that's a nice nice look too but yeah enough about this and let's get into my finished objects so the first one is oh my god this one my irish sweetheart sweater by in stitches by imogen this is in drops nepal in the i think the color is called red and i did this in the size 2xl and, and this was a test knit for in stitches by Imogen. And this is knit on five millimeter needles for the body and then 4.5 for all of the ribbing. 
and it has this really nice diamond cable down the front and the back and then these I don't know what you call them I, I've just been calling them regular cables where you do like they either go to the left or the right and then on the sleeve it has this uh, nice crisscross cable and I think the last time I showed this I had I'm not exactly sure I think I had still some left on the first sleeve I think or I might have completed no I don't think I had completed the first sleeve yet but yeah it's all done now and overall I'm really happy with how it turned out I really like the color and I really like the ease on my bust so I think this on me has like well, I don't even know if it has the recommended ease because this is quite quite form fitting, but it does have a nice amount of ease on my bust. But herein lies the problem. I think the last time I said that this was the longest sweater I've ever made, and as you can see, it is very long. And so when I have it on, it comes to my hips about, and since my hips are bigger than my bust the same amount of ease there does not look that great so it kind of is pretty tight on my hips which then just makes me look kind of like a a piece of no not a piece of, like just like a stick it, i don't really have any shape with this so that is kind of sad uh, i've been thinking well we'll see since it's not cold enough for this yet that I'll give it a chance. I still overall like how it looks. I'll just probably wear it kind of like a bit bunched up so it doesn't lie on my hips. But if I can't, don't find myself wearing this, I will just give this to my mom. My mom has said that she would like, or if I ever made her a sweater, she would like like a longer one. So this will probably go to her if I can't find anywhere for it. But at the moment, I'm very happy and I don't want to judge it till I try it, I think. But yeah, overall, really enjoyed the process. I think I did this in five weeks since I think the... Or no, not five weeks. I started this in the end of... I think the second half of July, I think, is when I started this. And I finished this like a week ago. So maybe, maybe like six to seven weeks, I think is more like accurate. Yeah, but really enjoyed it, even though it is a fairly busy pattern. The only time it felt like a slog was on the sleeves because the cat pattern, bro. Yeah, the pattern is different for the regular cables and then the crisscross. So I just had to keep like a mental note of what row I was on each, which, you know, doesn't help in making this like go any faster yeah but overall I'm really happy with this and I can't wait to wait until it is nice and cold and I can wear it again next up a second finished object it is my Rebecca socks there you go i finished the pair and these are from the surikasito magazine from the the september yeah it's the september uh release but i don't have it here with me unfortunately i'm too lazy to go get it but yeah rebecca socks and these are made in the gray color is Vilkolana arweta classic which is an 80% 80, 80 superwash merino and 20% nylon. And then the white color is Yertegarn sock four, or wait, I actually have the, yeah, is this sock four. And this is 75% superwash wool and 25% nylon. And as you might be able to tell, I ran out of the Arweta on the second sock 
I had just, I think, finished this last row of the cable pattern and was about to start the toe when I ran out and I'm, I'm sorry if you can hear my brothers yelling, they, they're playing some sort of game. But yeah, uh, originally I didn't want to do a white toe so I just used, them, used some scrap yarn and then that was like close enough of a gray and then used that and the white yarn to like kind of matched match the Arweta but that that gray yarn that I used wasn't actually a fingering weight so it turned out way too thick and bulky and I didn't like how that felt so I ripped back the toe and then just did it on the white or did it with the white again and but yeah uh, I much prefer this toe than to that weird gray toe and after doing that, um, or after ripping back and fixing it with the white, I didn't have leftovers from either of the yarns, so it actually worked out quite well in my favor. And I think I should probably mention that, as I said the last time, I messed up the cable pattern. So originally the pattern has you cast on 56 stitches, and then you're supposed to increase 4 stitches after the ribbing but I forgot to do that so because a repeat is a 10 10 stitch repeat my repeat is not as not quite as even but I would still say that it like turned out well enough but yeah I'm really happy with this and I really love the drape and I really love this pattern so much so that I think that I'll probably do this again at some point and I've even been contemplating like making an order of just Arweta and then holding it double to get me get myself a nice pair of socks. And then depending on how much I wear those, I could even put them in the machine, even though I really don't like to wash my hand socks in the machine. But we'll see. But overall, I'm really happy with these. And those were my finished objects. So, I guess we'll just get into my works in progress then. Uh, first, I'll show you the one that is the one that you've seen before that has had the most progress. And that is my Moby Sweater, Moby Sweater Man for my dad. As you can see, oh no, there's hair. As you can see, I finished the body. The stitch marker is where I was the last time. So, I did quite a bit. And then I started the first arm. And now, as you might be able to tell, the ribbing is half the length that it's supposed to be. So this is three centimeters instead of the six. And overall, the body is so shorter than it's supposed to be. And I have a good reason for that. <laughs> I hope, hope, I know, I know what I'm doing, hopefully. So my cat is playing around him but yeah um so yeah it's a bit shorter than it's meant to be and there's a reason for that before anyone comes yell at me in the comments that i'm making a grave mistake i know <laughs> but hopefully this will work out the way it's meant to so while i was when i was nearing the length or while i was making the body i kept making my dad try it on and he actually said that the length was like pretty good way earlier than the pattern said it was supposed to be and that's because he doesn't want any positive ease on this so when he was trying it it was literally just skin tight and that's how he wants it to be but since the pattern is originally meant to have like 10 to 15 centimeters of positive ease you're obviously supposed to meant to, meant to stretch it widthwise while you're seeing the length or testing the length and yeah that obviously is the reason why it's meant to be a lot longer than it probably needs to when it's unstretched but yeah he really likes the way it fits now before even blocking but he doesn't want it stretched widthwise at all so i had to accommodate for that while making the length so i think overall this is maybe seven to eight centimeters shorter than it's supposed to and I think 
Now, my mom is of the opinion that it's a bit shorter than it's supposed to, even though my dad thinks it's fine, so I don't know who to, who to trust, but whatever, I'll still, you know, watch this, and I'll just, when I, I don't know if you can even call it blocking, but I'll just stretch it this way to give it a bit more length. And since my dad likes that fit it is now, it don't won't. I don't think he'll mind if it becomes even a bit tighter because he really likes likes that look apparently, which is good for me because I didn't need to make it as long as I had to. And that's where I'm at the, with the sleeve. I still have I think four more decrease rounds to go before I do the do the cuff and I think the sleeve sleeve length is the, the sleeve length that is in the pattern is going to be good enough for my dad so I think that I will do according to the pattern yeah, I don't think I mentioned but yeah this is the movie sort of man by Petit Knit uh, it's in the size large uh, it's knit on four millimeter needles for the body and 3.5 for the ribbing except for the neckband that is done on three millimeter needles I'm sorry if my nose is so itchy, but yeah. And I'm doing this in Drops Neva, Drops, Drops Lima in the color, I think navy or navy blue or something like that, something navy. And overall, I'm really happy with how it's looking. And the sleeve has gone by Really fast since it it doesn't have the cross cross stitch cross thing pattern anymore so that's good I think this will most likely be finished within a month I hope because I will now focus on the sleeve and then make the other one but yeah really happy with the progress on this and my dad has been eagerly awaiting for his sweater so yeah next up next up i have my zipper sweater and this is also in drops nepal in red as you can tell i really like this and yeah zipper sweater uh, by petite knit i'm doing the size extra large for myself and as you can see i've joined in the round and i've actually separated for separated the sleeves from the body so a lot of progress and now i'm just in stock in it city working the body i've actually gotten it quite a bit done but yeah i'm really happy with how it's looking and i don't know this is knit on five millimeter needles and then the color was done on four millimeter needles and I actually looked ahead in the pattern and I was quite surprised to learn that all of the body ribbing is done on 5mm needles, I guess in order to give it that really like oversized look and make sure that the ribbing on the body doesn't, um, doesn't cinch in too much, which I get and I'm very excited for that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like in love. I can't wait until it's finished. It's going to be so cozy and oversized. Yeah, I don't. Do I have anything else to say? I don't. I, mean, I guess I. I'll go in the bit into the construction because I don't think I've done that. So you start with the double folded collar. So first you knit twice the length that you need in or need for the collar. You fold it double and then you knit it together on the inside. It leaves this really nice edge. Uh, after that, you work some short rows in the back, and these are like the easiest short, easiest short rows of my life. I don't think I've ever like been done with them that fast, so I was really happy. But yeah, after the short rows, you then work on just with the raglan shaping, and after you're done with that, you join it. The separate the sleeves from the body and then knit in the round until the body is complete uh, I really like that the after you join in the round for the zipper you do some more body increases so the sleeves, sleeve stitches remain a constant but the body increases increase 
just so that the zipper doesn't go in too deep which I really like but yeah I'm really happy with this and I think once the Moby sweater is done I will heavily focus on that although I do have another test knit going on so I'll have to focus on them equally <laughs> but speaking of test knits let's get on with that so I don't have much but this is my garden cardigan by knits by summer uh, and yeah I'm test knitting this currently for her and so far I really enjoy this I've never done this type of back yoke before I think where you cast on and then you have like two points from where you increase out and then after you've done all the increases I think you work a bit with a constant amount of stitches without increasing and then the shoulders are picked up from these edges and I really like how these two like edges of increases look I think it lo looks real nice and fancy and I am currently I am making this in drops air in the color bluebird and I don't think I actually mentioned any of the composite well, I mentioned the top uh, all of this sweater project so far have been either in drops Nepal or Lima which is the same composition of 65 and 35% of wool and alpaca. 35 of, I think, alpaca and 65% of wool. But yeah, drops ear is, I have another color so I can cheat. 65% uh, alpaca, 28% polyamide, and 7% wool. And it's this nice and airy and it's really soft. I really, really like this. And I chose this yarn for this because I think she used something very similar but a bit more expensive for her sample i think it was camaro snefnag i think is what she used which is i think a similar composition i'm not ac exactly sure i will not swear on that but yeah it was this like really nice and fluffy and airy yarn that she used for hers and originally as you might be able to tell uh, I was gonna do this in black, I ordered the black air for this, but then I decided that I would do the swatch in the blue because I have a sweater quantity of this blue air, but after I'd done the swatch, I decided that I really wanted to cast on and then I kind of convinced myself that I wouldn't want to work on a black garment in the winter months, which I kind of don't, so <laughs> I decided that, you know what, just to bring some bright colors into my life I would do it in this blue which which I'm really happy I really like the color and I really love the yarn and I really like how I don't know if you can tell yeah I think you can tell is this really nice very like it looks variegated because I think it's the because you can I think you can see on the yarn a bit that it's not all the way even like I think you can see like the I, th I think it's like the polyamide core within the yarn that the alpaca is blown through so it's a bit like white and that comes through in this yarn a bit which I, 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 I enjoy I'm not mad at it but yeah uh, I guess the specs I'm doing I'm test knitting the size 5 uh, this is also on 5mm needles for the body and then I think four millimeter needles for the ribbing and then it has a double knit button band and which I'm really excited for I, I've never done that before like I know how it is how, I've done double knitting before but I've never done an applied double knitted button band but I'm really happy and really excited to be working on that with this so with this cardigan but yeah my garden cardigan test knit for and it's by summer really happy I'm thinking of actually making this into like a project vlog I haven't actually started yet but I think I might start today because I'm not that far off like far into the project that it really matters 
when my parents came home. <laughs> but yeah, really happy with that. Next up, oh no, there's yarn vomit all over, uh, is my Oslo hat by Petit Knit. Uh, I'm doing the small, yeah, the size small, and I'm doing the regular version, so on 3.5 millimeter needles, and I'm doing it in this nice navy blue. So as you can see, I'm just working, stuck in it until I can do the, like the folded brim, I think. And I am doing this in Borgo de Pazzi New Cedro. I think this is the color True Navy. And this is 100% wool. And I really like how it's working. It's really soft in my opinion. I find that it's a really soft wool. I've actually ha I've actually done like a whole sweater uh, in the yarn, not that specific, not this specific color, but like the different color of the same wool, and I really like that sweater. But it's more of a, I guess, spring color sweater because it is like bright blue and green and yellow. So yeah, it's actually this green, this yellow that I that are in this because I used the scraps for this one, this vest. But yeah really like how it's working uh i don't know what else i can say other than maybe the oslo hat is i think it's a triple folded brim i think is what you classify it as so first you work a really long section of just stock in it then you fold it double so that on both sides it's like stock in it you don't have a pearl row pearl like pearl side anywhere and then i think you do like a german or no, or wait, yes, maybe. Yeah, a German short row to like twist the way that your knitter knitting goes with me or something. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, you twist the direction that you're knitting in, and then continue knitting and then do decreases to get the end of that hat. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, it's really easy to just start knitting on this hat. And you can also see like my weird way of knitting or it's not weird, but it is just like, it is a weird combination of continental and English, I think. Cause I throw, like throw with my left hand, but it's just like a very minimal throw. I've actually tried continental and I think I technically I can knit continental I can't really purl but my tension is really loose with that and this way I get really nice even tension so and I'm pretty fast this way so so I'm I'm happy with this but yeah I think enough about my <laughs> knitting style and let's get on with all of my acquisitions so yeah I'll start with what you saw, so drops air, uh, what was it, 60, 65% alpaca, 28% polyamide, and then 7% wool. I have 9 balls of this, uh, now that I'm doing the garden cardigan in blue instead of black, my next plan is for this to be, uh, I think on one episode I showed, I showed the Novita knitting magazine, I'll, I'll put a picture somewhere here uh of the magazine and on the front it has this woman in this really nice v-neck mohair thing <laughs> and originally i wanted to make that with the blue air but i think i will now make it with the black air because that would be really nice and classy next up because they while i was buying the drops air they, i also had a mohair sale so I decided to pick some drops kid silk for myself. So this is 75% mohair and 25% silk. And this is actually the first time I've ever bought like mohair for myself. Uh, I've bought drops alka, drops, drops brushed alpaca before, but never mohair. And I decided that I wanted to try, try cause I don't think I ha really have like that much sensitivity cause I'm one of those people like I always wear 
something underneath my knits. I never wear them bare, bare skin unless they're like camisoles, but even, yeah, I haven't actually done any camisoles, so I can't say on that, but yeah, if it's a sweater or like a sweater vest or something like that, I always wear something underneath. I can't wear them on their own. So I don't think mohair will really be an issue for me. So I decided to test it out and this is just plain old black. And the plan is to hold this together with my draw flora. I have 2000 meters of both. And I think I will do the April cardigan with this. Cause I think I'll just want to do a nice stockinette project in black. I did think about the Agnete, but looking into it, I don't really, I don't think I want to do brioche in black. I think that will be asking for trouble. So yeah, either the April card cardigan or maybe a sweater project. I don't know. We'll see. And then I bought some Pierre Gint, which I'm very excited for. So since the cool weather has been among us these last few days, I've been wearing my sweater sweaters and I actually got to take my Inger sweater out for for a bit and my Inger sweater is in this really bright blue I'll put a picture somewhere again and while I really like that I do think I want a bit more of a textured sweater in a bit of a natural color and for some reason I kept thinking of just like a nice dark brown and I think that is because uh, Petit Knit posted on Instagram a picture of her and her, I think it's her dad, wearing this really nice brown storm sweater. And I just couldn't get that picture like out of my mind. And originally I was thinking make it, maybe I could do like Ingrid sweater again. But after thinking about it and remembering how I did not enjoy making the cross section. Like even though that is my favorite part like of the whole sweater, the cross, the X cross thing. I, it was really um, a battle to get through that and remember to do all of that just knit rounds in between. So I decided that maybe not that, but I'll just do the storm. <laughs> so yeah, so I bought a set of sweaters quantity of Pure Gint. I think this color is just brown. I think there, that's probably the closest you'll get. But yeah, uh, at least like I looked at the color i tried to look look up the color name and i think it's just this is just brown but yeah i have sweaters quantity of this and the plan is to make the storm sweater which i think i will really enjoy because it does have a bit of a tip different texture pattern than the ingrid and i think it looks similar enough to the ingrid that i will really enjoy because i really like the look of all of the different sections of the pattern so yeah really excited for really excited for my storm sweater and then uh they had a sale on the discontinued uh colorways so i snatched up three skeins of this pure gint and the color is called blue iris maybe actually i should say the color numbers uh, so this blue one is i think five five three five and the brown is 3082, if you want to look up the exact colors. But yeah, at least on the website that I looked, they used the actual color names. So blue iris and brown. But yeah, uh, I bought this with the intention of making it into an Oslo hat. And originally I was going to wait. Well, I always say I'm going to wait, but clearly I could not wait for the black one with this. And I could not wait for my Pierre Gint with this. So I decided to test out the pattern in this nice blue one. But I'm really happy with how the blue one is coming out. But yeah, I think this one will also turn into an Oslo hat. The only thing is, I'm a bit worried if three skeins will be enough. But I think it was Ninitz who made it on Oslo hat. And I think she also made it in three skeins of Pierre Gint. So, and she has a really nice slouchy one. But I don't know. We'll see. If nothing else, then I'll just make it a bit shorter than it's meant to be in order to like actually get it out of three skeins. But yeah, I feel like that went by really fast. I don't know why. 
I was really excited, so I think I just talked really fast with all of these objects. But yeah, uh, I don't know if I have any media recommendations or whatever I've been watching. <sighs> yeah, uh, I haven't really been playing Hogwarts Legacy either. Today, I just played it with my best friend because he uh, hadn't played it, he doesn't own the game, so I wanted to show him a bit around the world. So I just played like the side quest that I had available, available and I found some Demiguise moons, <laughs> which I'm very happy happy with and I've listened to a bit of the My Lord of the Rings ebook not a lot but a bit and then actually I was listening to the ebooks and it got so like I got so frustrated with how slowly the story was going that I watched all of the movies so nice <laughs> but yeah I don't think I have anything else to say or to show you, so I will end this here. Uh, if you were knitting on something while watching this podcast episode, I would love to know what it was. Uh, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, uh, please leave them in the comments down below. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll also mention that yeah, I'm on Instagram at knitsvayada. And I will also link my Ravelry down below if you want to check it out. I'm trying to put all of my projects in there. I'll just, I just need to take photos of all of my finished objects and I'll post them on there with all of the, all of the things. But, and also like, I need to put my stash on Ravelry. Like none of this is on Ravelry, which does kind of make my life hard sometimes. So. I think once I have a few days off next week, I'll probably do that. And yeah, I think I'll probably try to do like my fall plan, fall knitting plans video next week. I do have some, although I've started on quite a few, but I think I have like very concrete plans for this fall, which is very good because I don't usually have, and I think most of them is using stash yarn, which I'm very happy about. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, please leave a like and maybe subscribe to this channel. I would really appreciate it. And until I see you next time, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and stuff like that. And have a lot of good knitting mojo. Bye.